And I'm going to ask Senator Michael Watson to come and talk with us about that. Thank you, Laura. Always fun to be with my firecracker friend, Senator Hill. She's, uh, she's a trooper. A, a couple things real quick, and one thing that, that Angela had mentioned, uh, that, that the Department of Education said, look, it was up to our local school districts to notify the parents. Well, uh, funny thing is, we also have a state senator that was a current school board member at the time, Tony Smith. And if you ask Tony Smith, hey, when you were a school board member, did you know anything about Common Core? He would tell you no. So for the department to say, well, it was the local's job to inform the local constituents, but the department didn't tell the school boards, then oh, something's going to rise there again. Look, there's way too many things to talk about here. I'm going to try to keep this brief. Another thing that Laura mentioned was the quickness with which the Mississippi Department of Education adopted Common Core State Standards. One thing that I learned uh, in, in visiting with Dr. Stotsky, who was on the Massachusetts uh, State Board of Education at the time, when they were looking at the standards, there was basically a promise given to them, hey look, this, this is going to be tied with $250 million for Massachusetts. So when it came before the board, there were no questions, there was no hearing, there was no anything. And Dr. Scott Stotsky basically, you know, pounded her foot and banged on the desk and said, no, 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 we're going to have some hearings. They were going to adopt it without ever having a hearing at all until she raised concern. That happened across this state. There was no Dr. Stotsky on the Mississippi State Board of Education at the time. Nobody banged their fist. Nobody said, let's have a hearing. Nobody said, where is this going? Where is this coming from? Nobody did that. It was just adopted. And we continued to hear this, so there was money behind it. And there was. And we all understand that background. There's a lot to talk about there. I want to talk about one, one thing real quick. The school choice avenue. And why is this important to, to parents out there who have said, you know what, we need choice in Mississippi. As we've talked many times before. That's one of our, our God-given duties, to raise our children. That's right. That's right. That includes having control of their education. That's right. That's right. One thing that we've gotten away from, and we've allowed the federal government, as well as some parts of the state government, to incrementally take away the education of our children. We've given it to the government, and parents have kind of taken a hands-off approach. That's got to stop. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm understanding this. How do we correct education in Mississippi? Two things that I think are paramount that have control. Number one, parents have to have control of their children's education. Yes. Number two, we have to give teachers ownership of their classrooms. That's right. That's not you say, well, how do teachers not have ownership of their classroom? I'm going to tell you. And, and there's already a divide there. That doesn't happen already. Common Core makes it even worse. It takes complete control out of the teacher's hands. So let's talk about a couple of things. And I'm going to give you bullet points because we don't have a whole lot of time to dig through this. But uh, the research is out there. Uh, the fact-based research is there. And I encourage you to take your time, do the research, tell your neighbors, tell your friends, tell your family members. Take the time to look. This is a huge ordeal that's going to impact our nation going forward. And I tell you this, when, when the president's folks are out there saying, Common Core State Standards is one of our initiatives. That should give you cause to be concerned. Uh -huh. <laughs> we've, talked about, we've talked about, hey, um, you, know, you like your insurance policy, hey, you, you can keep it. <laughs> Let me tell you this. You like your curriculum, you can keep it. That's what we're hearing. But understand that parallel is exactly the same. I'll touch on that in a second, too. So, real quick, how does this impact college cho or, uh, parental choice in education? The first thing you talk about are the college entrance exams. The ACT, the SAT, GED, and the others that are out there. What's happening to those tests that are being geared towards Common Core State mm -hmm. Standards? So, if you are a homeschooler, if you are in private school, if you're somewhere that has not adopted Common Core State Standards, you're at a huge competitive disadvantage. And you say, well, how do you get away from that? You can't. You want to go to college? You have to take one of these tests to get in. So this whole voluntary deal, this is uh, state-led voluntary, uh, no, it's just not true. So that at its very core, these, these testings uh, to get into colleges being geared towards Common Core State Standards, that's strike number one. You know, you're going to have to somehow be prepared for these tests with a common core state standards background and if you don't have it in homeschool or private school 
you're in trouble. Uh, speaking of homeschool, really quickly, the uh, big engineers behind Common Core State Standards, uh, David Coleman, Mark Tucker, uh, who have uh, prepared this thing and kind of driven it forward, are huge proponents of Germany's education system. Yeah. If you've not studied that, understand you take a test, it's either at the age of 15 or ninth grade, somewhere in there. Once you take this test, wherever you score the highest, that's your job. That's where you're going. That's it. And you can just talk about this. That's fine. No, I read about that. I heard that. No, no, no. My wife is a Spanish teacher. She had a German uh, student who was an exchange student from Germany. One day towards the end of their semester, she said, look, what are you going to be when you grow up? And the girl kind of looked down and she said, well, I guess I'm going to be a journalist. And Lauren said, well, well, I mean, why are you not excited about that? That's, that's a great career. That's a fun career. She said, well, I, you know, I just, I tested that in that uh, yeah. program in school in the ninth grade, and, and the government said, that's what you're going to be when you grow up. Yeah. I didn't have a choice. Mm -hmm. You know what else in Germany? Homeschool is illegal. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, understand, when you have people who are creating the system, it wasn't created in a vacuum. Th this idea came from somewhere. Yeah. These folks were educated somewhere, somehow, and they have a path to which they're driving us. So you look at what are these components, what, what systems do they like, is there any way this can get there? Well, absolutely. You see how it can get there. So the first thing is the college interest exams. Uh, sad note here, David Coleman, the name you just heard. Uh, he, David Coleman, was the lead uh, ELA standards writer for Common Core State Standards. Well, interestingly enough, David Coleman now heads the college board. What does the college board own? The SAT. This thing is so interwoven, it's, it's scary. So, uh, strike number one. People will say, well, <clears throat> then, then you, you can't escape it because these college interest exams are out there. So, so what are we going to do? Is Mississippi just going to be floating along by itself if we get out of Common Core standards? I don't mind that one bit. Because the same free market that provided the ACT, SAT, and GED will provide another college interest exam. Because that's what we do in free market. But here's the problem. It's going to take some time. So in the meanwhile, we're just, we're just stranded out here. Uh, again, voluntary and state-led, are you kidding me? When, when you have an opportunity to strand an entire state and its students because you're forcing them in this one direction, that's not choice, that's not American, that's not freedom. Amen. Right. That's scary. <laughs> so we talk about these standards. How, again, how does it impact school choice? Uh, some of these standards are tied to teaching methods. We talk about transformational geometry. Uh, again, these are things that are out there that I, I can't really read math standards, but I can talk to math professors, and those math professors tell me this is what it says. So when we adopted Common Core State Standards in the MOU that was signed by the governor and the state superintendent of education at the time, it says if you adopt one standard, you will use all the standards. Uh -huh. and, and these standards are copyrighted, which means you can't change them. Uh -huh. Now, states are given a little bit of flexibility to add things in. I think it's about 15%. That's so your hands are tied up to 85, at least 85 percent, and there's a little bit of flexibility in there past that. But again, understand, these standards are copyrighted. So say this transformation of geometry is, is not working. Our students are banging their head against the wall, as we have seen in, in schools across the state. I can tell you the number of parents who've called me crying. My child used to love math. Now I can't stand it. Doesn't want to go to school. It's happening everywhere and failing. So a teacher says, hey, um, Mr. Principal, look, this standard's not working out. We need to tweak it just a little bit. Mr. Principal calls the state superintendent. Hey, we need to tweak this a little bit. Well, well sorry, you can't change it because it's copyrighted. We got to go get permission from the NGA and CCSSO if we want to change it. Is that state led? No. Is that state control of education? No. Is that parental control of education? No. Is that school choice? No. Absolutely not. Because at the heart of school choice is flexibility and is competition. And if you don't have flexibility, you rip school choice heart out. It doesn't happen anymore. So then, we talk about the MOU. We talk about it at its very core, school choice is all about flexibility. And understand the word common core. They included common for reason. We're teaching everyone the same thing. Again, you take out school choice, you take out flexibility, you don't have anything. It's gone. Every child will then be taught the same thing. Now, I get the idea of, of, of there are benchmark-based standards we need to understand. But when you're lowering the bar, I just can't agree with that. And again, the writers of Common Core State Standards have clearly said, 
You look at California, you look at Massachusetts, you look at Indiana. They list these states and said their standards are better than what we have as common core. I got a problem with that. Because there's this idea of the 50 laboratories of freedom. And if California's getting it right, then doggone Mississippi, Mississippi ought to be able to say, hey, California did great, let's go adopt their standards. But you can't now. Because California needed some money. So they said, who cares that our standards are uh, benchmarked and are gold label in the United States? We got a chance for some money, so we're going to we're going to scale down our standards. We're going to take a step back. We're going to lower our standards, the Common Core State standards, for a chance at money. And that's how the federal government works. We've seen it time and time again. So again, one of the key components of school choice, and this is an issue that I've studied for a long time. Charter schools was an idea that I worked on for six years until we got it passed. And one of the great things about charter schools was, you looked at other states and what was working there. It was that flexibility, it was that freedom, it was that ingenuity, it was that, hey, what's working over here, but way better work in Mississippi. Common Core obliterates that. No longer is there competition, ingenuity, and freedom out there to, to try different things. It doesn't work, because now you're all boxed in to common standards. There's not the ingenuity and the freedom and, and the, the idea of, you know, hey, what works over there, let's take a look and use it here. Because everything's being common denominator. We're all going to learn the same thing in the same manners. Uh, that blows school choice up. Two things to, to end on the assessments. Um, you know, Dr. Porter mentioned this, Angela mentioned this. When you, when you have assessments that were funded by the federal government and that now the federal government has named a technical review board who will have the last say on these assessments, no one can tell me the federal government does not control those assessments. They funded them, and they have the last say on them. They control them. And you'll hear local superintendents and local districts say, now, we're in charge of our curriculum. And they are. That's, that's a true statement for now. If you like your curriculum, you can keep your curriculum. <laughs> for now. When those assessments come down, you don't tell me, and I asked a high school teacher this myself in Ocean Springs, Mississippi. So you tell me this, your, your students fail this assessment, they just bomb it. What happens? Do you keep teaching your same curriculum and let them continue to fail? Or do you change your curriculum to meet the assessments? And she didn't answer because she knew the answer. You change your curriculum. The federal government will guide that curriculum via the assessments. School choice, again, is all about flexibility. If the federal government is driving the assessments which drive the curriculum, school choice goes out the window because you don't have the freedom and the flexibility to teach things in different manners or to tweak your standards. Again, that's, that's the very heart of school choice. It's homeschool, it's private school, it's public charter schools, and it's public schools that work for a whole lot of folks. But you've got to have the freedom of flexibility and the ingenuity to try new things, see where it works, and bring it to other places. Again, Common Core obliterates that. The, the fifth laboratory is a freedom. I can't get away from that. Again, understand that that's what America was built on. The states created the federal government. The federal government didn't create the states. Right. Understand yeah. that. There's a reason for that. It's because, it's because the government closest to the people is better government, period. I, I'm from Pascagoula, Mississippi. You tell me the last time my, um, and I'm, I'm, this is not a slam, but tell me the last time my federal delegation spent time in Pascagoula listening to the folks. I, I don't remember. I just don't remember. I'm sure it's happened, but I don't remember. So, so, and again, that's not to them. That's just the idea of the local government. I'm in there. I know what's working. I know what's not. So the state should have the ability to get out there and say, hey, let's try something different. But what works here might not work in Maine. And what works in Alabama might not work in California. But those states have the ability to try it. And that's how it should be. Yeah. Yeah. One last thing. 